Hello Internet! We are here in the top 8 of the World Championships. So I top cut Worlds, um, I won through the last 16 round, I'm in the top 8 and I'm against a Mega Gengar and a Bronzong. And so, honestly, before this game, I had kind of resigned myself to probably losing. Um, but, you know, obviously I was going to be happy at, at top 8 regardless, but I did want to try and win, obviously, you know, as you would. Um, I just thought maybe I had the chance because his team did look a little bit weak potentially to Scarf Smurgle. Um, before the game, someone did say to me, you know, what has he got for Scarf Smurgle? And on team preview, I started looking through what he could have, and I did identify his Talonflame could potentially have um, a Chestoberry, so there was that. But um, the Mega Gengar was always going to be a problem for me because my Smurgle is choice locked. If I Dark Void, then I'm locked in. Okay, he's asleep. I'm not really offering any uh, offensive pressure with it, so I knew it was going to be a tough matchup. But we're going to get into the uh, team preview now. We're going to see my side, but uh, we did just briefly see his team. It was uh, Double Primal with Bronzong and Mega Gengar and Talonflame and um, something else as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I had I had a little bit of a, a plan. Like, I don't I don't like making you know intricate plans going into games. Like thinking, okay, so I'm going to lead this and do this, and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. Um, you know making it so um, precise like that. I like to look at the team preview and think of kind of like a plan there. Think of how I'm going to go about it, which maybe gives me a bit more sort of flexibility if things don't go according to, uh, you know, according to the plan. So in this game, I'm thinking, okay, so if the only thing he's got on his team for Smurgle is Talonflame, then I'm going to lead something that I don't normally lead. Uh, I have led it once in practice before, and it did work out for me, but I'm going to lead something really strange here, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how this goes. The older days of VGC, but back then it used Quiver Dance to increase its special attack, special defense, and speed, but in this format, you know, it just doesn't have nearly as much firepower, so this most likely being a bulkier Volcarona, maybe to help set up and just get some strong attacks off, but Jonathan Evans with the dual primal composition here. Those just hit so hard against all of Barry's team. Well, we saw yesterday Barry on stream using that Volcarona. It does carry the red card, so it's <laughs> going to be super, super annoying for Jonathan to deal with. But um, guys, we're just about to kick it into this top eight match. It's one of the final ones. Unfortunately, my Volcarona actually never was on stream. Um, would have been nice to... Uh, to uh, to show it, but oh well. Flame and Gengar for Jonathan, and, we're and he did lead exactly as I thought he would. But look at this. This is an, an interesting lead from me. <laughs> right now, these Pokemon, you know, I think all of them were actually legal in 2014 and 2015, so kind of surprised to see all of them, but pretty interesting here, right? Smeargle, always such a big threat, but Talonflame and Gengar are both Pokemon that get access to Taunt, and if you can Taunt Smeargle, you know, not that many Smeargles nowadays carry Mentor. Focus Ash is by far the most common item. Scrafty here obviously puts some potential in terms of knockoff. It does have big up pressure as well, but Talonflame is a Pokemon that does get access to Quick Card. But knockoff is a big deal. Could potentially knock out this Gengar or just do a lot of damage and uh, damage to Talonflame as well. But I think if I'm Jonathan, I'm a little bit okay or I'm a little bit happier about my positioning here, especially if I got Taunt on one of my two Pokemon because I can shut down that Smeargle. And also, we haven't seen Jonathan's team before properly, so we don't know if this is a Mega Gengar right. or if this is a Gengar that's carrying a Focus Sash. Right. He's also got a Manectric, which uh, actually usually is only used for the Mega Manectric version. So is this going to be a normal Gengar? If there's a knockoff, will it just activate the Focus Sash or will it just do big damage? Oh no, it's going to be a Mega Gengar here. here so we're going to go. activate the trap. So we've got Shadow Trap on the field. It's now active. Scrafty and Smeargle are both locked in for Barry. We're going to see a Protect from Mega Gengar here for Jonathan Evans. And Scrafty onto the Talonflame here. So Talonflame is going to take a little bit of damage, but will not be able to act this turn. A critical hit there. And a Dark Void coming out from Smeargle and avoids for Talonflame. So a little bit of damage onto Talonflame there, but Jonathan Evans got off quite lucky. I do yeah, um, again, I can't complain because I'm using Dark Void and Dark Void does miss 20% of the time. Um, but this is one time I did not want it to miss because um, both of my Pokemon are trapped in there now. Um, I did half expect his Gengar to protect because um, if I do just go for a Dark Void and I don't... Um, uh, don't fake out his talent flame then um, he could uh, wake up with what I'm presuming is going to be a chesto berry and just taunt my smurgle and it's trapped in there as well so we would just be able to leave it alone and just you know target my partner at that slot um, at that time the problem here is 
Uh, I was expecting to get the fake out onto the Talon Flame, and then I would be able to Dark Void because I am Scarfed. I'm faster than both of them. The, both of them Pokémon. If the Gengar didn't protect, I would be putting it to sleep. Um, the Talon Flame, I would be wasting its Chesto Berry as well. So the next turn, because I'm Scarfed, I would outspeed his Taunt and be able to put it to sleep again. So that Avoid was actually really big here. I do want to point out that the Dark Void actually went before Talon Flame's attack, and so. That looks like it could be, it should be a Choice Scarf Smeargle. It is, we saw it on stream yesterday. Yeah, and here you go. So Choice Scarf Smeargle is actually a big deal because even if either of these Pokemon carry Taunt, uh, I can still outspeed and just pick up, or, you know, put them to sleep. But of course, now both Scrafty and Smeargle are trapped in, and anytime you have a Smeargle with a Choice Scarf trapped in against a Mega Gengar, it can only use one move and it can't switch out. So you have to really rely on its partner. Scrafty right now, an okay partner, but it could potentially get burned here or take a lot of damage from either Talonflame or Gengar. So. Okay, so just imagine if the Chesto Berry was burnt on his Talonflame right now. I'm still okay with that, especially because of the miss there. That definitely helps out Jonathan. You know, we t they t like that's just something that helps you and doesn't put you at a disadvantage. So we saw. Uh, well, let's go back to the turn because this is more <laughs> important. So Tailwind is going to come out from Talonflame here, and we're going to see uh, the speed increase of both the Pokemon. Here's Dark Boy. Oh, here we go. It's going to hit one of the Pokemon. It's going to get both though. Let's see. So let's going to see Gengar going to fall. Oh, oh Talonflame avoids it again. So but not Mega the Gengar. One. <laughs> yeah, Mega Gengar really wanted to stay awake there. Gengar is going to take its first turn of sleep now though, but Talonflame managing to avoid a low, low kick. kick onto the Smeargle. <laughs> low kicking itself. So. Obviously, realizing that Smeargle is not the play to be trapped in here. <laughs> really intelligent play from Barry, but also a little unorthodox. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I've never seen a Smeargle get one hit KO'd by its own partner, but this is the one time where it makes sense. You pick up the knockout, you get a free switch in. Because that Dark Boy was able to connect on that Rayquaza, now you have so much more offensive presence. But how Yeah, um, so you can see, like... If, if I did hit both of those Dark Voids onto the Talonflame, the first turn, the Chester Berry would have been burnt. The second turn, it would have gone to sleep. Like, if I'd hit both of them, then both of these Pokemon would be asleep. And because I knocked out my own Smurgle there, I got a free switch into Rayquaza. Because I did that, I didn't have to waste a turn, a sleep turn, um, you know, switching Smurgle out. in or, or, actually, I couldn't, could I? You know, doing whatever with it, you know, Dark Voiding into nothing. Um... So, you know, basically knocking out my own Smurgler, I felt was the best thing to do. Um, I'm really unfortunate about the Dark Void misses onto the Talonflame. I really can't complain about that because it is Dark Void, but if both of them had hit, I would have been in a really good position right now. Talonflame did get that Tailwind up. The Tailwind's a big deal because if Gengar is able to wake up, it will be able to just outspeed and do a lot of damage. Now, naturally, Gengar and Talonflame are already stronger than both of the Pokemon, uh, faster than both of the Pokemon on Barry's side, but that's a really, really clever uh, low kick into itself because I think like, if you don't pull that off, then you're just stuck with Smeargle against Mega Gengar. And there's no offense there. There's no exactly. Still, and you're just wasting time because Grangar's just going to sit there and slowly take out your Pokemon. If Gengar, if you're Jonathan now, do you leave Gengar in on the sh off chance that it wakes up? Right. You know, that's something you have to ask because if you switch out, do you even have any safe switches you know looking at Jonathan's team he does have that bronze on which I would be surprised to see if he didn't bring because I think it's so helpful against the team composition that Barry has you know especially Xerneas and Rayquaza here so I wouldn't be surprised to see a switch out Talonflame here of course can still get a Brave Bird off it's super effective against Scrafty no switch outs though here we go so we're gonna get the mega evolution from Rayquaza the roar into the sky and a big twist to say Barry I've arrived let's get through to the top four so we've got Rayquaza mega evolving Delta stream is now gonna be active as well doesn't really matter too much against the Pokemon opposing Pokemon, but also going to put the weather in its favor a little bit here. We've got the Protect coming out from Mega Rayquaza as well. well oh, Gengar, Gengar does wake up. up! There we go, Sludge Bomb directly onto uh, Rayquaza, into the Protect. will it Whoa! So a double target directly onto that Rayquaza. Clutch Protect there. Big knockoff onto Talonflame and knocks off the Chesto Barry. So really good information for Barry. Yeah. What a turn. So at first I was like, you know, why protect the Rayquaza? Shouldn't you want to get as much damage off as possible? But that was perfect for Barry, actually. He gets so much out of that turn. He reveals the Chesto Barry as well, which is so important when it comes to that uh, scarf smear goal. And yeah, I did. I did actually expect the Will O Wisp into Rayquaza. I did know it was a bulkier Talon Flame. I did expect the Will O Wisp into the Rayquaza, so I protected it. I wanted to use a knockoff into the Talon Flame because it hadn't used its item at that point. Yeah, you know, it would do a lot of damage and put it into extreme speed range. So that was my plan at this point. In terms of future games, of course, this is a best of three, so so much more can happen. But really, really nicely played by Barry. However, he still has the issue in the, you know, 
Tailwind is still up. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the, the main thing, though, is that Rayquaza's Extreme Speed's priority is actually higher than Talonflame's Brave Bird, so you can actually just knock it out with an Extreme Speed right now. At most, Gengar can maybe get a Sludge Bomb off. They'll do a lot of damage, but Scrappy could potentially retaliate with a knockoff, and then that's two turns of Tailwind burned already, so they'll only have one more turn. All you have to do is protect Rayquaza, and Tailwind should expire. But, you know, so this turn's quite interesting, but I'll take you, I'll take you Jonathan through it. still has an arsenal of Pokemon in the back, we don't even know what they are yet. Let's see how this turn plays out. So we're gonna actually see the Gengar switching out here, so the trap will be lifted after this turn. Kyogre's gonna come in here, and it's gonna set up the rain instead of that Delta Stream. So Primal Kyogre hitting the field for the first time. Jonathan Evans looking into Barry's eyes there, just saying like, what did you do? Did, right. you, <laughs> did you launch a Dragon Ascent at my Kyogre? Because if you did, I'm really not gonna like you for doing that. So we've got the Primordial Sea coming out now, Water type attacks will be boosted here and so what is this uh talent oh. gonna do it's gonna hit the will-o-wisp directly onto that rayquaza really really clutch move there the burn rayquaza not be gonna be able to do that much damage uh, with this dragon ascent you can imagine this dragon ascent probably is gonna go into that primal kyogre slot trying to get rid of that trap for barry right and it is going to go into that slot there. It's not going to do too much damage. That burn is really, really helpful. And yeah, I mean, Will-O-Wisp Talonflame, a bulky Talonflame, really interesting to see in general. Here's a knockoff, going to target down that Kyogre slot. So Barry making the read, and that almost would have worked out if Talonflame had gone for a Brave Bird, but Jonathan... Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that 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 Dragon Ascent actually did nothing to his Kyogre as well. Like, really. <laughs> so I could have just extreme speeded into his Talonflame there. Um, to stop myself from getting burnt potentially and like knocked off into the uh, into the Gengar But I felt like I was in such a, a bad position at this point because my last Pokemon is um, Xerneas in the back so I didn't like as long as he's got his Gengar. I'm losing basically so I needed to get rid of that um, Get rid of the Gengar. Um, I did Maybe think he could have switched his talent flame into a bronzong or something else that would take an extreme speed a really obvious extreme speed um, a bit better as well um, but he didn't um, and uh, If he did switch to Gengar you know, going for the knockoff into that slot as well I thought would do a bit of damage into something else as well, but um, uh, potentially the bronzong as well, but um, Didn't work out. I just felt like I was in such a bad position. I needed to try and get rid of the Gengar. I needed to do, to do something. There is also the chance of will -Wisp potentially missing as well. Um, you know, I missed two Dark Voids. You can miss a will -Wisp, can't you? <laughs> just if it worked like that. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I think at this point I know that the game is over, just especially looking at how much damage that did to his Kyogre as well. So um, I think I, I had to do that. I mean, if we did go for an extreme speed into the Talon Flame there, he would have had a, 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 a switch into his you know, Kyogre. I would have had a little bit of chip damage onto it with um, Knockoff, but then I'm sure he probably would have brought his uh, Gengar in again. And his Gengar has actually got Will-O-Wisp as well, so... Um, not only would he be able to outspeed and maybe even knock me out with a sludge bomb, maybe, but he would be able to burn me again with his Gengar. So now we're beginning to see how much of a problem Mega Gengar is for this team. It's a massive problem. Saying, okay, if you don't extreme speed my talent flame right now, I'm just gonna burn your Rayquaza. And that's so helpful because this Mega Rayquaza really, really does not like its attack decreased. Yeah, you just want to make sure if you've got your Mega Rayquaza out there that you want to preserve its special, uh, sorry, its, its physical attack because it just does so much damage. But Kyogre coming in there still taking a, a, a hefty amount, especially if it wants to use a water spout later on in this game. Yeah, it does take a lot of damage there. So, you know, Barry's not in the worst of positions, but still, uh, this turn is a little bit interesting, right? Rayquaza could go for the extreme speed, but Tailwind's still up. So you can just Ice Beam the Rayquaza without the air current up from Mega Rayquaza. Ice Beam can just pick up a one-hit knockout. Kyogre is just a pretty big threat. We still, I don't think, have seen the item on that Scrafty. A lot of Scrafties like Assault Vest, but maybe this one not carrying one. But Jonathan has been playing this pretty well. That last one, I think, was really nicely executed, even though Kyogre took a lot of damage. I think he's still in a slightly better position. So we're going to see the extreme speed coming out from Rayquaza here. It's going to go onto that Talonflame slot. 47 HP ticking down. No! Oh, 9 HP! Bulky Talonflame coming out there. The Brave Bird will get the recoil damage, but it's going to do a huge amount to one of these Pokemon. Scraft, he's going to take that. Yeah, I did kind of suspect the Talonflame might have survived that just because it is a bulky Talonflame. Uh, but... I don't think there was much else I could have done there too. Um, I mean, I think he is still in Tailwind as well. So if I'd gone for a Dragon Ascent, his Kyogre would have still outsped me, and uh, and uh, well, yeah, I would have survived. But yeah, I don't think there was much that that 
I could have done that turn, to be honest. That, that will o wisp really paying dividends there. Yeah, and you know, Barry. Yeah, the will o wisp was was the problem. Speed. Sure, Kyogre would have been healthier, but at least your Rayquaza isn't burning. Rayquaza is really the main Pokemon in this matchup. I think we you know we haven't seen Xerneas from Barry's end yet. And again, because he has got the Gengar in the back, I've just lost the game. This pretty much, I think, is over. Uh, unless there's a surprise overheat on Rayquaza. Actually, even if there is, rains up, so you can't even do anything about that. Do you know what I love about this matchup, Aaron? What is the fact that we've seen a Talonflame here, and Talonflame is a Pokemon that had really great success. Success at the beginning of this format yep. as a really fast attacker yep. and it died off his 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 time is stalling now um which he doesn't need to do i mean he is he's, he's definitely won the game at this point um but he i mean you know i'm i'm not blaming him at all i mean i well I'll probably i probably wouldn't do the same but you know is is just collecting his thoughts he had a bit of a drink of water i'm having a look around having a drink of water as well thinking you know this is so unnecessary you have won the game but um yeah i mean i, I don't blame him for doing that he's just collecting his thoughts um maybe maybe even thinking about the next game but let's you know let's just get on to it justin Karras. justin had a significant advantage in terms of team matchup but wolfie just executed it so much better and played it really masterfully here jonathan has a better team matchup and he's playing better and that's why you know this first game is looks like it's going to go into yeah i like i like that aaron does uh recognize that he has got the team matchup as well um, you know, using Xerneas and Rayquaza against a Mega Gengar and a Bronzong is harsh. Get a Sludge Bomb off here against Xerneas, and Rayquaza's gonna faint in two turns to Slaburn. I just realized that we could be seeing, actually, four Mega Gengar make it through to the top four of the World Championships <laughs> here in 2016. Kangaskhan and Salamence move aside. Hey, we Scott, don't need where you. are you at? Yeah. yeah, exactly. We don't need you anymore. Gengar has finally arrived. It shows how strong that Shadow Trap ability is. It allows so many different plays from um, your Pokemon. It gives the uh, opposition so many headaches as well. We're gonna see the Protect coming out from Rayquaza, but the burn is going to do a lot of damage to it as well once his turn is done. Here's sludge a sludge bomb. bomb. Onto the yeah, I mean, the game was over. I just I just did that just in case he made some sort of really weird play and uh, thought, my Gengar is faster than his Rayquaza. I will just knock that out with a sludge bomb and, you know, do whatever with Kyogre. You know, just in case he did that. Um... I, you know, just protected and, and went for the Geomancy. But, I mean, I'm going to be going down to the poison, uh, the burn, rather, uh, you know, next turn anyway, so it didn't really make any difference. Anyway, maybe he just wants another turn with it, but uh, really, really good turn here, and we do see the Ice Beam. Does start oh, getting into yep. at least. So the, the burn won't pick up the knockout here. Rayquaza hangs on with a little bit of health, but maybe Barry is just looking for the information now. Right. I mean, maybe he's realized that he's an intelligent player. He's realized that he's in a really bad position. He hasn't seen Barry, uh, Jonathan's third Pokemon, and he just wants to know how much damage these moves are going to do to his Pokemon. And we did see that uh, Sludge Bomb kind of roll onto Xerneas, right? I was expecting to pick up the knockout, didn't it end up surviving with around 10% earned. Uh, so and that could be a big deal for the future matches, especially because we saw that Xerneas outspeeds the Kyogre as well. But, you know, I guess what Barry was trying to go for, maybe like, okay, now I can Moonblast Gengar and Dragnus and Kyogre hope for some critical hits. But all Jonathan has to do is double protect here, let the Vakuasa faint to burn. And then Xerneas can't knock out Kyogre and Gengar at the same time. A Dazzling Gleam will knock out Gengar. Gengar will knock it out in return. So this definitely is going to be a win here for Jonathan Evans, I think. Yeah, and he's, he's still stalling again, which, you know, it's, it's fair enough. It's his right to do that, but... Um, the game, the game is over, really. Um, I was just thinking, you know, maybe they got a double critical hit with Dazzling Gleam, maybe I could have done something, but, um, you know, critical hit Dazzling Gleam still wouldn't have knocked his Gengar out in one, so, uh, the game is definitely over right now. Put the clamp onto Barry. Yeah, and the reason why I think this is a big deal for Jonathan is, you know, he could have just sacrificed the Pokemon there, but then you reveal what your fourth Pokemon is. In a best of three, Jonathan conserved so much information and was able to take a very, very dominant set. So, excellently played there. I thought Barry still played relatively well, but one, the team matchup just wasn't in his favor. Smeargle was only able to put one Pokemon asleep, and I really think that Talonflame was the MVP for Jonathan. Yep, and I think there's uh, a lot to take away from this match. And but uh, really Yeah, so just think about how this game would have been different if I did hit both of those Dark Voids onto the Talon Flame. Um, you know, again, I can't complain. You know, because it is Dark Void, it is Smurgle. Um, but uh, on that second turn, both of those Pokemon would have been asleep. I probably would have still low kicked into my Smurgle. I would have knocked it out. They would have both been asleep. I would have been able to bring in um, probably Rayquaza and go for a Dragon Ascent or whatever onto the Gengar. Um, he did actually wake up first turn with his Gengar here as well. So you know, if, if that had happened, then maybe maybe he would have burnt my Rayquaza anyway. But um, if both of them were asleep, if the Gengar didn't wake up first turn, then I would have potentially won this game, I think. So those Dark Void misses and the first turn went with the Gengar um, just were, were, you know, the end of it really for me. But again, not complaining. I can't complain. Dark Void had been pretty good to me during uh, the tournament, so... 
a lot of um, a lot of really key moments in which anything could have happened if it was a usual set. But you know, the Talonflame being bulky really uh, messed up Barry's ideas. The trap coming in from Mega Gengar really put a dampener on Smeagol as well. Yep. And Barry had to sacrifice early on, and that kind of let put him on the back foot for most of the game. Absolutely. And now Jonathan of Evans is in one game away from making the semifinals of the World Championships. I. Uh, Barry, of course, is down one game, but he's no stranger to competition. You know, he was so close to making top cut at Worlds. I'm sure he's ecstatic enough just to be in this top cut, but... Barry we can't really hear it properly, but uh, the audience were, were chanting Barry. So thank you, all of you people who were, who were uh, you know, cheering for me. You know, really, really appreciate that. Thank you. I want to taste that again. Yep. And coming ninth in the world in 2013 really shows that Barry has a hunger and is an intelligent player. But guys, we're just about to go into team preview. So Jonathan Evans' team, which you cannot see, is Kyogre. So Thunderous is the Pokemon on my team that I use least. Um, definitely, I use Thunderous the least. But with how he used his Talon Flame last game and with Mega Gengar being a problem, I thought Thunderous could actually do some work in this matchup. So I thought I'd give it a go. You know, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> I think Thunderous is a more consistent option. Uh, you know, Scarf Smirkle is still solid, and I think it actually makes a lot of sense against Jonathan's team, but. The Gengar trap is so big, right? Barry had to knock out his own Pokemon just to even stay alive in that game, and it worked out for him to an extent, but I think like maybe you want to adjust by not bringing the Smeargle. I think Thunderous can play a huge, huge role. Once again, though, you have to prepare for the Bronzong in the back. We didn't even see it from Jonathan the last game, and I still think it's probably one of the best Pokemon that he's got on his team. I think Scrafty definitely needs to make a reappearance because Scrafty's at least got that knockoff to deal with it, so maybe I'm thinking Scrafty, Xerneas, Thunderous, Rayquaza. Uh, the other issue is that Barry's restricted Pokemon barely did anything that last game, yeah. whereas Jonathan, he actually really didn't even even need his restricted Pokemon either, but you know, Barry, in order to deal with that, he should have been uh, protecting his restricted a little bit more, and the burn onto Rayquaza was so big. But now you know that it's Pokemon Talon Flame, right? Pokemon's all a game about information management. You've gotten significantly more info now. We'll see if Barry can adjust and take this to a game three. Well, you see both players sharing a laugh and sharing a smile there. There's no hard feelings going into this game two. So Barry Anson, after losing the first round, will have to play catch up now. Jonathan Evans of the United States is sending out Talon Flame and Gengar. There's and the Thunderous. There yeah. we see it. So Aaron Cyber Tron Zhang is a psychic. We see the Thunderous <laughs> coming in alongside that Rayquaza, and there's a lot more damage on the field for Barry this time. Absolutely. I like that Thunderous so much more there because you can taunt the Talonflame. You've got that priority taunt, and Talonflame won't be able to will us be Rayquaza. So there's a plethora of options, but the other tricky thing here is we don't know Gengar's moveset. Gengar's a Pokemon that actually likes to carry Icy Wind a lot of the times, so and if it does carry that, it could be potentially bad for Barry. So we're not sure if Barry knows this information or not, whether he has Icy Wind, we don't even know. But at least I think Thunderous puts him in a significantly better position. Great adjustment there by Barry. Jonathan trying to go for the same leads, but, you know, I think he's uh, definitely doesn't have the lead advantage this time. But that's the thing. We're in game two. Jonathan is one game up, yep. so he feels comfortable with this lead. Maybe this is a lead he's been using most of today. Right. And he knows there's a lot of options in which he can uh, deal with the Pokemon that Barry has. So even if he uh, takes an early lead disadvantage, then maybe he can pull it back later on or take it to game three. Yeah, and so we're actually going to see Talonflame swap out here. Groudon actually does come in. So we did see Kyogre the last game, Groudon this game. You got to wonder if Jonathan actually maybe just didn't bring Bronzong. He feels like dual primals is still the way to go. I don't need my Bronzong to deal with your Rayquaza or your Xerneas. But this is the beautiful thing about um, bringing two primal Pokemon is that you can just cater it to what you think is going to happen in that match. And obviously going for the primal Groudon here, won't be able to take a Thunderbolt or a Thunder Wave because it's an immune Pokemon because of the ground typing. We see the Mega Evolution now coming out from Gengar. Gengar going to set up that trap once again. Groudon now going to be on the field. Thunderous and Rayquaza locked in as well. So Rayquaza is also going to be Mega Evolving here. And the Sunlight is going to go into the Delta Stream, which is going to take away some of the damage done by... Uh, uh, sorry, by... by Ice type attacks and also uh, Thunderbolts or super effective attacks for Rayquaza. We're going to see a protect from Rayquaza. They're going for the speed boost. Uh, we're going to see the uh, Thunder Wave. Going Thunder Wave on oh, the we Gengar. Oh. Well played, Barry. There, he knew that there could be an option opportunity for Groudon to come in. Didn't want to risk missing an attack. A Willow is also Ooh. from the Gengar. So dual Willow is here. Yeah, we do actually get to see that his Gengar does have Willow Wisp as well. Um, I did want to protect the uh, Ray, uh, yeah, Mario Rayquaza there just in case uh, he did get a Will-O-Wisp onto it with his Talonflame because um, I was Thunderbolt, uh, Thunder waving his Gengar there. If he'd left his Talonflame in, he could have just gone for a burn, 
um, with it. Uh, but I did kind of suspect that, you know, because the Talon Flame was um, really the, the thing that burnt and gave me so much of a problem in the last game, he might want to try and switch it out. So I didn't want a Thunderbolt into it. That was, you know, it's way too obvious. Um, so I went for the Thunder Wave on the Gengar, which gives me, um, you know, so much momentum as well, because it finally means that my Rayquaza can outspeed it and I can threaten it with um, a couple of attacks. So uh, that game, that turn rather, worked out really nicely for me. This um, Groudon, uh, because we are in the Desolate Lands, uh, does not really threaten my um, Rayquaza either. So I'm not really that worried about the... Uh, uh, the Groudon at this point too, so I'm feeling pretty good actually right now. From the Talonflame and the Gengar, but Barry plays that very, very nicely. Paralyzing Mega Gengar is a big, big deal because it does mean it does mean that this Mega Rayquaza now will be able to outspeed and potentially just one hit knock it, uh, knock it out with a Dragon Ascent. Groudon in an okay position, but Groudon doesn't really like going against Thunderous or Rayquaza if gravity isn't up. Of course, it can use fire type attacks against both of them, but I think if you're Barry, you're very content. That first turn played out perfectly. You went from a good lead matchup to uh, still a very solid position, and you're Jonathan. You didn't get that burn onto Rayquaza and your Gengar is paralyzed. So this game playing out a lot differently from the last one already. And this is the thing, guys. We're in the top eight of the World Championships. It can go either way. And these sets have been incredibly exciting, incredibly intelligent. And we just don't know what's going to happen. And it's so exciting, Aaron. Yeah, oh my gosh. I cannot sit in my seat anymore. Here we go. There's going to be a taunt coming out from the Thunderous here onto that Gengar. So no more will o -Wisk going to be spread for it. We're going to see Hold a sword on. dance from the Rayquaza. And this is going to be really, really important for later on in the match. But Jonathan's praying for something here. Oh! Option coming up from Groudon. How much damage will this do to these Pokemon? It's going to do over Ooh. half to Thunderous, and it's going to do about a third of damage to Rayquaza, but we see the Citrus Berry now for Thunderous. Does Gengar attack through the Paralysis, though? It's probably going to go for such oh, It is paralyzed! No. Ooh, that is so bad for Jonathan. He really... <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, I did kind of think that he might have wanted to protect or switch his Gengar there. Um, and because I wasn't threatened by his Groudon either, I thought that, that was a good turn to get a Sword Stance up, because if I Sword Stance, if he has got Bronze Sling in the back, I'm still to it KOing that. Um, so, um, wasn't really threatened by the Groudon. You saw the eruption, you know, with the Citrus Berry, my Thunderous can even take another one as well, which is quite nice. Uh, the bad thing is my Thunderous uh, doesn't really threaten his uh, Groudon at all. I can't touch it. Um, his Gengar did get fully paralyzed there, which is nice. You know, that that's one of the reasons, you know, obviously why I went for a Thunder Wave as well. Um, by his reaction, he wasn't going for a Will-O-Wisp. The taunt was quite obvious onto it, so... Um, you know, maybe it was safer that I did go for the taunt, but I don't know, maybe a Thunderbolt could have worked as well. Um, if he did not get fully paralyzed there, I'm expecting it was a sludge bomb onto the Rayquaza. I probably would have survived it because I haven't got any uh, drops at this time. But if he did get the poison there, I would have lost the game there and then. So that paralysis might have seemed lucky, and it was lucky, but it was only lucky really if... Um, he did get that one in three. You know, he would have had to be lucky to get the poison as well. So, uh, so we'll. I'll take that. I'll take that. He really needed that. He needed to get some damage onto that Rayquaza or onto that Thunderous. He could have picked up a knockout there. Yeah, absolutely. It's still not, I guess, the end of the world. And the reason why I say that is because Rayquaza can only target one of two Pokemon at the time, right? So Dragon Ascent's most likely going to be a one-hit knockout after that Sword Dance on both Groudon and the Gengar. But who do you target? If you Dragon Ascent Groudon, then a Sludge Bomb in retaliation can knock out the Rayquaza. And conversely, if you Dragon Ascent the Gengar, Thunderous is a Pokemon that doesn't have any way to hit Groudon unless it's got a Hidden Power Ice or a Hidden Power Water. Yep. And Which, even if you do, you barely do any damage. Exactly. So, With ice, at least. Water yeah, would knock yeah. it out. We have to figure out what uh, what Barry's running here. We see the Rayquaza protecting. So, obviously, he's got that boost up. Doesn't want to take any additional damage or pick up a, a cheeky knockout here. So, we see the Thunderbolt coming out from Thunderous. He's going to do some really good damage oh. here. So, a bit of a special attacking focus. Thunderous here. Get, and Gengar is paralyzed once again. Yeah, pretty sure he was just attacking into Rayquaza there. Um, yeah, there's no reason for me not to protect my Rayquaza there, just because Thunderbolt, two Thunderbolts are going to knock this Gengar out. And now I am actually in a really good position. Barry's consistently been making the better plays this game, and he's made such a smart adjustment. Now this is so good for Barry, because all he has to do is Dragon Ascent Groudon and Thunderbolt that Gengar. So this is a real turnaround in positioning between Jonathan Evans and Barry Anderson. Jonathan winning the first round of this best of three. Barry is now in a more commanding position. We can see the Dragon Ascent coming out from Barry Anderson. It's already had a Source Dance. It's got a plus two going up into the atmosphere, slamming down onto that Groudon. It's going to hit it out Woo! in one hit. That is some big damage. That's a knockout. 
Groudon doesn't be able it, <laughs> it literally just goes down in one hit, and it's so rare to see that. It's just like, oops, uh, I can't take this anymore. So that's a huge, the crowd is going wild here. The Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt. Oh, oh, and it goes as well. Gosh. So really great turn for Barry Anderson here. Two Pokemon down, Thunderous is still around, can still spread paralysis if it needs oh to. Oh my gosh, don't forget- I didn't expect the Dragon Ascent to actually knock the Groudon out. Um, just because, I'll pause it, just because um, I did expect it would be a sort of slightly bulkier Groudon. Uh, my Rayquaza is jolly, it's not adamant. Um, I think we calculated it, Jamie Boyd calculated it afterwards, and I had an 18% uh, an chance to one-shot that Groudon there. So if I didn't one-shot the Groudon, it was probably going to go for a, a fire punch onto the Rayquaza. So, um, you know, that would have definitely put my Rayquaza into, extreme, into a Brave Bird range. So maybe I was a little bit lucky there as well. Thunders is still here, and, and the Kyogre. Kyogre. It oh couldn't be better. Gosh. It couldn't be better for Barry Anderson. This is the matchup that he really wanted to see. So Kyogre and Talonflame on the field now. Extreme speed range for that Talonflame. Thunderbolt onto the Kyogre, doing do some serious damage here. And Jonathan Evans in a tight spot. Yeah, Barry's in a prime, prime position to win this game. He has played so well. I mean, that adjustment from game one to game two, right? Game one, it was like, Smeargle did, didn't, it just didn't do very much. Rayquaza got burned, and I kind of just got bodied. Game two, it's like, why don't I just protect Rayquaza? It's a really good Pokemon against Jonathan's team. Oh, wait, what's the best Pokemon to pair Rayquaza with? That Thunderous looks really good against all of Jonathan's team as well. Yum, 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 <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Exactly, I feel like he's found that lead combination that's basically perfect for him, and he is in such a good position. It's still not over by any means. I mean, Talonflame is a Pokemon that gets access to Tailwind, and that's also always a possibility here, but oh my gosh, here we go. We are four, two, so four Pokemon to Barry Anderson, two Pokemon to Jonathan Evans, and we're gonna start now. Brave Bird is gonna be coming out from Talonflame. Jonathan Evans is hoping this is gonna do some big damage. How much will this do? Rayquaza, it's no! gone! Oh, so close! What a survival for Barry Anderson. Dragon Ascent is gonna come out now. Is this gonna one-hit knock out the Primal Kyogre as well? We're gonna have to see how bulky this Kyogre is gonna be. It's gonna slam down. Is it a one-hit knockout? Yes, yes it, it is. is! Amazing! So, hey, hey, Primal Pokemon. Hey, I heard you got a lot of bulk. Not any <laughs> yeah, that might have seemed a little bit strange that I didn't go for like an extreme speed or anything like that. Uh, that I risked the Brave Bird, I suppose, knocking out my, my Rayquaza. But um, I felt safe doing that because um, I know that a plus two extreme speed was not going to knock out his Talonflame. Um, you know, if you saw a couple of days ago against um, Kamal in uh, day one, my plus two uh, extreme speed did not knock out his Talonflame. And this Talonflame is a lot bulkier as well. So, um, I didn't really want extreme speed. I thought it would have been a waste of a move. Um, if the Brave Bird had knocked out my Rayquaza, I was Thunderbolting his Talonflame as well. So, his Talonflame would have gone down. My um, Rayquaza would have gone down. And then he would have got a water attack onto my uh, onto my uh, Thunderous and knocked that out as well. Um, I did have Xerneas in the back as well. So, I did feel like either way I had won that game. So, um didn't want to play silly. I didn't want to choke it away. I just felt just going straight for the attacks was the best move for me there. But uh, we're going into a game three now. If I win this game, I'm going into the top four of the world championships. Yeah, season and it yeah. obviously had success. Requaza Kyogre, Requaza Groudon, Requaza Xerneas getting to the top of so many tournaments. But so many players ask, you know, is it consistent enough to be at the top of the world championships? This Requaza team on Barry's end, obviously, very, very different in terms of composition. But wow, Barry shows why he's one of the best players in Europe and the world by making such smart adjustments. And it was all that thunderous. Just gonna say, uh, Europe saw it first, Aaron. <laughs> Europe saw it first. But guys, left hand side of your screen, Jonathan Evans, his team is going to be Kyogre, Groudon, Gengar, Talonflame, Mainetric, and Bronze. Song. For Barry Anderson, you can see Smeargle, Scrafty, Rayquaza, Xerneas, that Volcarona, and Thunderous. Aaron, what does Jonathan need to do here? I mean, you have to deal with the Thunderous Rayquaza combination, right? I think Barry found finally a duel that's so consistent regardless of what Jonathan can bring. So I'm kind of looking at Jonathan's team. First of all, you definitely don't want to lead a talent flame into that. That just doesn't make very much sense. I think in Bronze Line can actually make some sense because it does at least get some damage off with Gyro Ball. But you also have to be really afraid of the potential taunt from Thunderous and of course the sword stances from Quaza. That one sword stance boost means so much. I'm wondering if Manectric actually could make an appearance here. I think Manectric could actually play a big deal. One, with the Lightning Rod ability. Two, if it's got a hit. I wasn't worried about Manectric at all because I thought if he brought Manectric then he can't really bring Mega Gengar as well. 
And, you know, a normal Manectric is not much of a threat, so I was not worried about the Manectric. It was all the Mega Gengar that was the problem. Okay, guys, here we go, the uh, handshake. Here we go! Uh, the nerves are starting. I don't know how those guys aren't shaking. I'm shaking back here, but we are in Game 3, Top 8 of the World Championships here in San Francisco. It's going to be Jonathan Evans against Barry Anderson, one game apiece. Here's and the again! Lead, the same leads, Thunderous and Rayquaza, Gengar and Groudon for Jonathan Evans, so he swapped that Talonflame in for the Groudon this time, but... How does he deal with the Thunderous? Right, so this is a little bit better, I would say, at least, because at least Gengar and Groudon both have a large amount of, uh, a large amount of offensive pressure, right? And what I mean is, Talonflame last game was forced to switch out, so Barry was able to capitalize on that first turn and get a free Thunder Wave. This time, it's not as easy. If you want to paralyze the Gengar or taunt it to prevent a Will-O-Wisp, you're going to have to take a lot of damage, and we saw Jonathan, you know, he got a little bit unlucky that last game. He wasn't able to get the Sludge Bomb off. I think this is a smart adjustment from him because Groudon and Gengar both do so much damage with Eruption, with Sludge Bomb, etc. So huge, huge, huge position here for Jonathan. I think this is a much better adjustment, and I think it's the right one. The only question is, does Barry, or is he able to kind of outmaneuver it? Does he go for a taunt onto the Gengar? Is he going to allow Rayquaza to get burned because we did see Gengar carries Will-O-Wisp? I am so excited to see what these players are going to do. Both have shown how intelligent they can be and how strategic they can think about this matchup. Obviously, Mega Gengar being in here, Barry's got to wonder if he wants to leave these Pokemon in to be trapped by that Shadow Tag. Yep. Groudon is in a good position here. I mean, Rayquaza, if it Mega Evolves, it will lose that Delta Stream because of the Desert Land being set up. But Gengar's just going to leave here. Doesn't want to be involved. Bronzong. And there's the Bronzong for the first time. I think that's a right Pokemon to bring, especially against both of these Pokemon. The trap, however, is gone now. We are going to see Meg uh, Rayquaza Mega Evolve. You know, does it go for just a Dragon Ascent on the ground on to reduce its damage output? So, Swishy Swishy says Mega Rayquaza. Are we going to see that Dragon Ascent? As Aaron said, Delta Stream has set up here. So, are we going to see a Taunt? Oh, oh Taunt coming out onto the onto the Bronzong slot. So, uh, that's a really, really clutch Taunt there. Oh, there's the Sword and Stance. And Sword though. Stance. Okay, so. If we see an eruption coming out from Jonathan's Groudon, that won't be, uh, still won't be enough to knock out this Rayquaza. Thunderous is going to survive it as well. So going under, just, yeah, in the red there, and he's going to activate the Citrus Berry. It's a critical hit, so a little bit more than last time. But with that Swords Dance up, Barry is in a nice position. Yeah, I mean, once again, Dragon Ascent can just one-hit knock out that Groudon. But, you know, one of the main things you have to consider is that, I think Bron yeah, yeah, so I did, <laughs> I did the little thumbs down. The audience were booing, like, you know, pantomime booing, just because he got that little critical hit on my Thunderous. So that turn worked out really nicely for me. Uh, I don't really care about the critical hit on my Thunderous there. I got um, the Sword Stance on, Ray on uh, Rayquaza. Um, really, I was worried about if he just stayed in and went for, like, a Sludge Bomb and an Eruption or something. Um, I think my Rayquaza, again, would have survived like we went through in the last game. Um, but I got my Sword Stance. This Bronzong can't... Trick Room, it can't do anything now, so I'm actually in a really good position. Um, let's see what happens. Bronzong is also a great Pokemon to bring into this matchup as opposed to the Talonflame. Reason being, Rayquaza doesn't have a way to hit Bronzong other than Dragon Ascent at extreme speed, and Bronzong obviously resists both of those attacks. So, unlike the other game where Rayquaza was able to get a boost and just hit for neutral damage after getting that boost and knock out everything, at least Bronzong now resists his attacks and a connection threat in with Gyro Ball. If Rayquaza knocks out Groudon or anything with the Dragon Ascent, then a Gyro Ball after the Rayquaza loses its defenses could actually potentially pick up a knockout. So, a lot of really interesting and intricate maneuvers that these players can make guys. Barry Anderson with the Swords Dance on his Rayquaza, he's not one who's shy to get some boosts up. In his 2015 team, he had a Swords Dance Scissor, Mega Scissor in <laughs> fact. On his 2014, he had a Dragon Dance Mega Tyranitar as well. He loves getting boosts up. Thunderous is going to lead the field though. Smeargle coming back in. Mm. So uh, another adjustment from Barry Anderson. The Protect onto the Rayquaza. Again, really making sure that the Rayquaza is protected here. Oh, eruption, here's just an eruption onto though. the Smeargle. It's going to do big damage. Wouldn't can it knock it out? Let's see, let's see. It's it's gonna so oh! no, it doesn't survive here. So Barry unable to get that dark void off. Gyro Ball going into the Protect, but that was a good knockout for Jonathan. I really think if Barry had Scrafty, he needed to switch it there, because if you have Scrafty, you can Dragon Ascent, knock out Groudon, the Intimidate happens against Bronzong, and now Gyro Ball can't knock it out in return. I really hope that Barry did bring the Scrafty, because if he doesn't, this matchup is so difficult because of that Bronzong. That's something I identified earlier on, right? Bronzong's so good against the core. We don't see a Scrafty coming here, so it's very likely he didn't bring it, and that's... Okay, and so let's just talk through that, because it was that one turn, that one turn that lost me this game. Um, oh, it's painful to see it back. Um, okay, so on the first level, I thought uh, there's a decent chance he'll protect his Groudon, because if I just drag an Ascent into it, then um, there's a, maybe a chance I'll one-shot it like I did the last game. 
um, and I'll just get rid of it and I'll I'll be okay. I'll be you know I'll be able to bring my smuggler in all right if you protect. Um, if I did, I suppose you know from his perspective, if I did drag an ascent into his Groudon, um, a gyroball with my minus one defense would have had a decent chance of knocking out my Rayquaza there. So I didn't want to do that. Um, I was just. I, I maybe I was just a little bit rash that turn. I just thought that he'll protect his Groudon. I'll be able to bring in Smurgle for free, and then I will be able to transform into my own Rayquaza and to it KO his Bronzong. Uh, I didn't take Scrafty in this game. If I had brought Scrafty, then I would have even probably won the game. I would think um, in a position like this. So that is really frustrating. Um, the the mistake was bringing in the Smurgle there. Um, but the right move was protecting Rayquaza. I did protect the Rayquaza. What I should have done um, is just gone for a Thunderbolt onto the Bronzong. Um, again, though, I thought his Groudon was going to protect. And I didn't want to be sat in there with Rayquaza and Thunderous uh, just doing nothing, really. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I really should have just kept the Thunderous in. Um, protecting Rayquaza was good. Um, I mean, let's say I did Thunderbolt the Bronzong, then the Bronzong would have taken about 35% or so. It would have been in range. Um, no, 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 it wouldn't have been in range of a Dragon Ascent from there. Um, but key, the Thunderous would have gone down and would have had a free switch into Smurgle. If um, I did protect the Rayquaza like I did, and he did erupt, um, I would have got like you know a chunk on his Bronzong. I would have brought the Smurgle in. What I then could have done is potentially used switcheroo on his bronzong to give it the choice scarf which would stop it from going for a trick room but it would also mean that my rayquaza would definitely be able to survive a gyro ball from his bronzong uh, the downside there would be if he didn't um like predict that which i'm not sure if he would have predicted that to be honest um, and gone for a fire punch as well onto my rayquaza um it, you know and that is you know if his groudon didn't um survive um or if it did survive, rather, like it didn't in the last game. So, I mean, there were lots of things that could have gone on there. Um, bringing Smurgle in was, was not the right move. I mean, I suppose, um, because, you know, as you can probably tell, I've done a lot of thinking about this game. If I had brought uh, Scrafty, then the game would have been a lot easier. It was an oversight for me not to bring anything that could hit that Bronzong for super effective damage. But he didn't bring the, bron he didn't bring the Bronzong in either of the first two games. I should have still prepared for it then. So, not bringing Scrafty... Uh, was really the biggest problem, but even if I didn't bring the Scrafty, like I didn't do here, um, I could have protected Rayquaza, um, I could have got a Thunderbolt onto the Bronzong, let my Thunderous go down, I didn't think he would just do that though, um, then I would have had a free switch into Smurgle, and I would have had some options, I could have gone for a Dark Void, uh, but I know his Bronzong has got a Lumberry, so I probably wouldn't have, I could have gone for a Transform into my own Rayquaza, then I would have had, I would have had two plus two Rayquazas, or, like I was just saying, I probably would have gone for a switcheroo onto his um, Bronzong, which means his Jarry Ball wouldn't have done much damage to my Rayquaza, and it would have stopped him from, you know, stopped his Bronzong from being useful, you know, because he, he wouldn't have been able to swap up his moves and gone for a Trick Room in the future. And then, because my Smurgle didn't have a, a um, Choice Scarf on it anymore, and because this... Um, this Groudon isn't timid, um, I would think that there's a decent chance my Smurgle, even without the Scarf, would have had a chance of, you know, outspeeding it, so um, I would have been in a really good position, so even without Scrafty, I think I still had a chance of winning this game. Bringing Scrafty would have been good, I think I had a decent chance of winning the game. Um, just letting my Smurgle go down there was really bad, though. If I had Smurgle, I would have had options, and I could have still won this game, but... It all came down to that one rash move. I just thought he would protect his Groud on there and I would get a free switch into my Smurgle, but he didn't. Um, his mindset is if you hit me with a Dragon Ascent, you're lowering your defense, my Bronzong can knock out your Rayquaza, and then you can't touch my um, Bronzong or, um, or Gengar in the back. And you're seeing now how much of a problem Bronzong and Mega Gengar are for this team. So um, interesting game. Um, it could have been different as well, just to note, um, the second to last change I made on this team was taking Hidden Power Water off of Thunderous as well. This Thunderous has Protect, it did have Hidden Power Water, and I, took, I, I could have two-hit KO'd the Groudon as well with Hidden Power Water, it would have made the matchup, um, this scenario, so much easier for me, so I'm kicking myself on lots of different levels right now.
that's bad, bad news. You saw a little head shake from Barry there as well, yeah. so maybe he's feeling the pressure now. Yeah, I mean, he's in the same position as he was last turn. He just lost the Pokemon. So if you're Jonathan, you can't feel any bad. I mean, you can't feel any worse. This is really good for you. You've made the right adjustments, and Barry, I don't think, made the proper play, uh, adjustments, right? We didn't see a Scrappy there. I, thought, I think Scrappy could have been so huge there, mainly because it just counters that Bronze Song so nicely. Knock off with so much damage, you could double up onto it. And you'd imagine, you know, you can actually just fake out Bronze Song, Dragon Ascent, but because Scrappy hasn't made an appearance yet, it's looking pretty bad for Barry. It's still not over by any means, but Jonathan should be able, or, you know, he must be able to taste top eight, right, or top four right now. Yeah, and it's a really good position for Jonathan Evans. Yeah, it's still not the worst of positions for me, but I do need one critical hit here. I just had to hope that the combination of these attacks knocked out his bronze off. Up into the atmosphere, which it, which Pokemon is it going to target? It can one hit knock out that Groudon, you'd imagine it will. No! no Bronzong! Oh, oh, 71 HP. Gosh. Really, 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 really bulky bronze on. I think he can take this Thunderbolt that's coming from Thunderous. Here we go. No, is can it survive? survive? If it does, it most likely will be the game. It oh, does survive. HP. And Roshi gets up. Gyro Ball's going to come oh, out from the that bronze on. That's going to be a double knockout, most likely. And we see the Gyro Ball. The Gyro Ball will come out. We've got to see the Gyro Ball here. Jonathan Evans, did you press that? Yes, he did. Oh, and Rayquaza will God. go down here. You can see how much that means to Jonathan. Yeah, so I, I just needed, I really just needed um, one critical hit and I still could have potentially won that game there. Uh, so that is quite frustrating. Also, think back to how the game started. He led with Gengar and Groudon. If I had led with Smurgle, I could have just gone for a Dark Void straight away or, you know, something else. Um, so, you know, he, I made the adjustment in the second game to bring Thunderous. He made the adjustment in the third game to bring Groudon. Um, again, I'm kicking myself on a different level for um, not trying to one-up that and uh, maybe start with Smurgle. Like, if I'd led with Smurgle and Xerneas even, then, you know, if I'd hit my Dark Void on his Gengar, I would have probably won the game there and then as well. So... Lots of levels I'm kicking myself because this is really my worst matchup against Bronzong and Mega Gengar, and I could have won the game. My gosh, I can understand the play that Barry made, right? It's weird to see a Dragon Ascent go into Bronzong, but if you can Dragon Ascent and Thunderbolt Bronzong, you eliminate the Pokemon that threatens to make a Rayquaza the most. And with Xerneas most. in the back as well. Yeah, and so honestly, I think if Scrafty was in that slot instead of Smeargle, Barry had such a good chance to take this, but that Smeargle being absolutely useless, kind of similar to that first game, pulling Barry down more than anything, right? It just put him in a disadvantage. So unfortunately, Scar Smeargle, not the call here, and it looks like Jonathan Evans is going to be able to advance on. Now, it's not over yet. You know, if there's any Pokemon that can pull a one versus is for it is Xerneas, but it just doesn't have enough turns, right? If you Geomancy, then you just get knocked out. Yep. If you Dazzling Gleam, Groudon gets a Fire Punch off against you, and then Jonathan still has a Mega Gang. Just a very, back. very difficult for Barry here, and Jonathan must be so pleased with the position he's found himself in. You can see how much it means to the players that have made it through to the top four of the World Championships. They're all extremely jubilant, and it's going to be really, really great to see who's going to make it through in this match. Obviously, Xerneas is in a very difficult position here, but we don't want to count Barry out just just yet. Dazzling Gleam is going to knock out this Bronzong here. How much will it do to the Groudon? Not too much at all, obviously, because of the resistance to uh, fairy type attacks that a fire type Pokemon does have. Fire Punch onto this Xerneas. It's going to do a big amount of damage. It's not the most. Oh, look at that. A critical hit as well, with a little bit of gravy on top there. <laughs> and just under half HP. So a little bit of booze. A lot of booze. And then we've got some Gengar coming out here, and that's all she wrote. You can imagine that. Wow, what a crazy set. I mean, this is kind of the testament to best of three play and how players really adjust, right? In game one, Jonathan kind of just swept. Game two, Barry kind of swept, right? He figured out the right strategy. But game three, Barry didn't consider the, you know, adjustment. You can see the commotion going on now um, behind Jonathan. Um, we'll get onto that in a moment. The Groudon Gengar lead wasn't the worst of positions, but I really think Scrafty was a Pokemon that was necessary there. But it's so hard to make the right predictions, the right calls, and, you know, expect what to come out. You know, maybe if Jonathan did go with the same four Pokemon again, Barry just... So the game, you know, the game is over now. I mean, there's nothing that I can do. Um, didn't forfeit. Just thought, well, I'm going out of Worlds right now. Let's go out properly. Let's just let Xerneas go down. You've done a good job, Xerneas. Um, the, um, yeah, so there was a bit of, you know, controversy, I suppose, at the end of this game. Because you might have seen Jonathan did put his middle finger up at the audience. <laughs> um, which is not the nicest of things to do, but, uh, but, um, uh, I don't know, like, 
I'll take you through what was happening. So earlier on in the game, I did sort of go, you know, boo, you know, sort of, you know, thumbs up, uh, thumbs down rather to the audience, just as a sort of pantomime, you know, like boo, he got a, a critical hit that didn't even matter on me sort of thing. Uh, the audience were booing him as well. Um, just, I didn't think it was a serious sort of boo, though. I like it was just like a pantomime sort of thing. But it really seemed to get to Jonathan. And um, just then when he got the critical hit with a fire punch, the audience were just sort of booing. Like The game was already over. I mean, it's not like it even mattered at all. Just sort of booing just for the fun of it, just for the pantomime. And I think that upset Jonathan. And he put his middle finger up to the audience and he swore in the microphone as well. The microphone only goes to me and the judge and maybe some people in the back as well. Um, but... Still, that, I suppose that's not, you know, sportsmanly conduct or whatever. And um, he was whisked away after the game. And uh, I didn't know really what was going on because um, I hadn't actually seen that he'd sort of put his finger up to the audience. Um, and uh, apparently they were basically deciding if they should disqualify him or not. Because, I mean, you know, the world champion that stuck his finger up to the audience, you know, potentially. So, um I don't know, if they had disqualified him, then maybe I would have gone through to the top four as well. So that obviously would have been nice for me, but it maybe would have been a little bit unfair on Jonathan. Um, I don't, you know, he, he wasn't sticking his middle finger up at me. He wasn't, um, you know, he wasn't offending me. Um, I did say to him after he did that as well, after like, because he did swore, swear on the microphone and I, I thought maybe he was a bit upset. I did say to him, you know, it's nothing personal. They're just having a bit of fun. So... Um, I'm sure I'm sure he's over that now. I'm sure everyone's over that by now. But it was just a little bit of drama, and um, yeah, I just want Jonathan to know. I'm sure he does know now that I'm sure there was nothing, um, you know, no hard feelings from the audience. You know, certainly no hard feelings from me. It was just pantomime. It was just a bit of fun. I just feel a little bit responsible because I was, you know, sort of pantomime, you know, thumbs down and you know booing to the audience, you know, just just for a bit of fun, just because I was up there top eight at Worlds and I knew I was going out basically. So. Um, you know, no hard feelings for anyone, and um, it would have been very harsh for him to get disqualified. Um, again, though, like I was saying, um, I did kind of resign myself to going out at that point, just because there was a bronze song and there was um, a Mega Gengar. But looking at how this whole set worked out, I do feel I do feel like I could have won the game. In that first game, the first game of the set, um, if both of my Dark Voids had hit the Talonflame, I would have been in a really good position um, there and then. Um, the second game, I did get lucky to win. Um, he did get fully paralysed on what I presume was a sludge bomb onto my Rayquaza, but he would have needed the poison uh, for it to mean anything. Um, um, I suppose um, I would have been in Brave Bird range there as well, but I did have Xerneas in the back too. Um, and in the third game there, I didn't um, bring my Scrafty. So on Team Preview, I could have gone an extra step above. I could have even led with Smurgle. Um, even... Even when I didn't bring Scrafty in that third game, I could have still won the game if I didn't make that rash move and just switch my Smurgle in to uh, the eruption. I was just so sure that he was going to protect his Groudon, but he didn't. Which is fair enough, because he had the move that if I did Dragon Ascent, he could have probably knocked me out with a Gyro Ball there. So that's all he had to do, really. It was a rash move by me. I could have just let my Thunderous go down, um, let Smurgle come in for free. I would have switched my Scarf onto his Bronzong. His Bronzong would have been useless. Um, a choice Scarfed, minimum speed Bronzong, and a minus one Rayquaza, I think, does about sort of maximum 49, 50%. I think it's something like that. So... It would have worked out a lot different. I had options. I could have won the game. I didn't. But I really, really can't complain because I played a few Smurgle over the course of Worlds. None of them got an evasion boost on me. Um, I didn't miss too many Dark Voids. Um, I missed more Dark Voids in this game than in any other game, I think. So missed two Dark Voids here. So I can't complain about that. Uh, also, there were quite a few um, Bronzong and Mega Gengar teams going around. You know, uh, Wolf, obviously, who won. Marcus and Billa all using it as well. Um, I didn't bump into them in the second day of Swiss or in the top cut as well. If I did, then it would have worked out a lot different too. So there's that. Um... Uh, my Swiss opponents in day two, I did beat two of those Japanese, you know, two Japanese people who top cut worlds last year. I did beat both of them. Both of them dropped as well. So that messed up my resistance. So, um, you know, I'm not complaining because who knows how that could have, um, you know, worked out as well. The top cut bracket would have been different if I was higher up in the rankings too. So um, I am... 
maybe in some ways fortunate to get to top eight, but I did feel like I was playing really well uh, during the day. So, um, you know, who knows what would have happened. So, you know, I am not complaining. I am over the moon that I got top eight. Like the competitive side of me is thinking I could have won and should maybe have won that game against Jonathan, but I'm trying to be a little bit more human now. I'm trying to think, wow, I did get top eight. I have won, um, you know, $3,000, which will, you know, get reduced with tax and, you know, conversion to pounds and whatever, but it's still money and it's paid for my trip. So really not complaining at all. I had a fantastic time at Worlds. I did really well. And, and I got ninth at Worlds in 2013. I'm over the moon to have beaten that. I got into the top eight. My final rank was actually seventh at Worlds. Um, I did put six on Facebook. I did ask someone actually, um, the uh, like head judge or whatever. I asked what my final uh, uh, ranking was, and they told me sixth. But looking how everything worked out, I am actually seventh. So um, yeah, not complaining. Seventh at Worlds, top eight, top eight in the world. <laughs> best Rayquaza and Xerneas combination. Uh, second best Smurgle in the world. Best Vol Corona in the world. Best. Uh, Scrafty in the world. Ah. It's over. Top 8. Over the moon. Thank you guys for watching. Um, still, there's some stuff coming up. Team report coming up next. And then some more stuff as well. So stay subscribed. Subscribe if you're not already. Some more stuff coming up on this channel. Thanks a lot, guys. Please like, share, get this out there. This has been a really long video. But goodbye for now.